Hey, my name is Demari Johnson, and I'm going to take you around my school. I go to the nation's best entrepreneurship school, Babson College. So naturally, I want to see how innovative is my school and one of the things that matters most, the state of the planet in a few years from now. So let's go around and look at all of the green building features here at Babson College. Let's do it. Let's take a walk through the park, the Babson Park, that is, and look at sustainability at Babson, starting with the place that I live which is the Johnson House. Before we get into every other building on campus, let's look at the place where I live and how sustainable it is in our building. Inside of this Johnson House, our bathrooms are all gendered, meaning to save waste and water, everyone uses the same bathrooms to prevent overuse of water. We also do not have paper towels in support of sustainability, hence where a lot of the hand dryers come in place. Leaving my own dorm space, Across from where I stay is the Reynolds Campus Center. The campus-wide center, a building used for multiple things. There's game rooms in here, classrooms, and as well as restaurants. Because this is one of the largest restaurant spaces on campus, Sustainable Babson has went out and got a green restaurant certification. What this means is that this building was designed, or at least the restaurants, were designed to be sustainable by managing waste, food production, energy, and chemicals as the GRA certification represents 30 years of research and excellence in the field. At the Sustainability Office, which is also in RAIS, we see events that Babson is hosting. The most popular event hosted every year is the Zero Waste Challenge, where you see the winner here. The community that produces the least amount of trash wins a cash prize for their community. RAIS is just one of many buildings designed to lead standards on campus. At Babson College, there are two LED certified buildings and many buildings designed to these standards. Here is another building designed to these standards. We're currently walking to Park Manor South, one of the freshman dormitory options for students on campus. Here at Park Manor South, as you can read in this, this building was designed to these standards, which covers the building materials, indoor air quality, water efficiency, and how the building interacts with the surrounding areas. Noteworthy sustainability feature includes the building's energy efficient heating and cooling and lighting systems that make the building 15% more efficient. They also have LED lights to minimize energy use while these lights are also sensitive. This dorm was built in 1923 and renovated in 2015 to the LEED standards. These renovations included things such as heating and cooling, whereas this dorm now features a two-pipe heating and cooling system that allows hot water to enter or retrieve from each room. Let's go over to the next dorm over, which is Park Manor West, across from Park Manor South. A building on campus which is used for a variety of things, such as large events, networking events, guest speaker events, and it's even a dormitory. This building was designed under LEED standards as well, whereas many noteworthy features of this building for sustainability include a rooftop solar photovoltaic and solar thermal arrays that provide renewable electricity and hot water to the building. There's a bike storage room, an energy efficient heating and cooling and lighting system that make the building 24% more efficient than comparable conventional buildings. Here we have the mixed use part of this facility, whereas it's not just in a dorm, but a huge event space and classroom. The large floor to ceiling windows are a feature of many baths and buildings, using natural lighting to avoid the use of energy. Continuing along, across from Park Manor West is an LED certified building, our library, created in 2019, which is the Babson Commons. Here looking at the Babson Commons, just like Park Manor West, it also has huge floor to ceiling windows, something that is a staple amongst most Babson buildings where natural lighting prevents wide energy use. This building also has trees inside of it, in which these trees are used to help maintain the sustainability and indoor air quality of this building. When the sun is not out, these trees grow are facilitated by grow lights, which come in the form of ultraviolet lights to give these olive trees the same light they used to get in Florida. Inside of Horn, not only is it a library, but there's also a classroom. These classrooms also have sensor lights, like many places do within Park Manor South. These sensor lights, again, help manage energy use and keep this building even. Here we are back at the middle of campus, and before we make our last stop, 
departing from my norm, let's go through a bit of maps and sustainability history. In the early 2000s, we had a president named Shelley Chaplin who pushed for a carbon reduction. Eventually, the sustainability office was created, which created student-led initiatives for slashing trash, and Babson even switched to single-stream recycling, and they now recycle over 30% of their product and have had a 25% reduction in carbon production. And that is led by efforts such as places like this. This is the Watchman Foundry. Here we are at the Watchman Foundry, one of the LED certified buildings on campus. Here you look inside of the, and you see a variety of creative items because the Watchman Foundry is a place where students can come and create whatever they want. Some students go out their way to take advantage and create sustainable things, such as these hydroponic farms that you see on the screen. These hydroponic farms are used to grow and create vegetation in places that don't have access to do the same thing. The foundry is such a unique place because it has such low emissions. Using heat island reduction, the roof of the Wiseman Foundry helps reduce the heat island effect by using a combination of vegetated green roofs and light colored roofs, according to the sustainability panel posted in the Wiseman Foundry. They maintain indoor air quality by regulating occupied spaces with natural light and also using low emitting materials and adhesives to reduce VOCs. Big shout out to Rady Green for giving me the opportunity to do this tour, teaching me more about green building, and being a partner for this video. Thank you and see you next time. Hey, my name is Damari, and I'd like to give you a huge thanks for joining me on this sustainability tour. If you're a student, here are the three things you can do to make sure your school is staying sustainable. One, ask around for the administration, are there LED sensored lights? Meaning, are these lights motion sensored or are they just set to run at all times? Two, encourage recycling. At Babson, we have a thing called the Zero Waste Challenge, which we talked about earlier. By helping encourage recycling amongst you, your peers, and the whole school itself, you can reduce the waste that the school has. And lastly, something that may be out of our power, but is never, never wrong to ask. How is the school powered? Because a place like Babson was conscientious of how much buildings are powered by carbon and fossil fuel energy, they took the initiative to create solar roofs and create things like hydroponic farms. These are initiatives that can be taken to help reduce the overall carbon emissions. And although it may be out of the scope of our student reach, it still does not hurt to ask. Those are the three things that you can do to help make your school more sustainable.